What is visual music? Is it music videos? Is it visuals controlled by audio or audio controlled by visuals? Or is it music remixed with movies live? Let's discuss and get into it right now. Question, what do you think visual music is? Put your answers in the comments below. If you like what you see and you want to support this channel, please subscribe and ring the bell below. Visual music, sometimes called color music, refers to the use of musical structures and visual imagery. It also refers to the methods or devices which can translate sounds or music into a related visual presentation. An expanded definition may include the transition of music to painting. This was original definition of the term as coined by Roger Fry in 1912. Yes, 1912. To describe the work of Wassily Kardinsky. Visual music also refers to systems which convert music or sound directly into visual forms by means of a mechanical instrument, an instrument's interpretation, or a computer. Visual music overlaps to some degree with the history of abstract film, though not all visual music is abstract. Visual music has also been defined as a form of intermedia. There are a variety of definitions of visual music, particularly as the field continues to expand. In 2013, I had not yet discovered the term visual music, and I had no idea how to describe my art. At first, I used VJ, but later I coined my own term called Cinema Electro. Cinema Electro is defined as fusing electronic music and film into a live performance creating a song live from only the sounds and imagery of movie clips. Yeah, I thought I was pretty clever. <laughs> okay, so if I haven't already confused you enough, let's dive into where visual music began, how it grew, where it is now, and where it's heading. With that said, Perhaps you had better start from the beginning. Let's take a look at the early years. The year is 1725. Yes, I actually said 1725. In 1725, Louis Bertrand Castel conceived the first ocular harpsichord. It was not until 1735 that the first ocular harpsichord was made and with it the start of visual music. To have it sound, one would press a key with a finger and thereby a valve is opened that produces the chosen tone. At the same time, fitted silken threads push or pull to uncover colored boxes with a painted lantern inside. At the same moment, a tone is heard and a color is seen. While this may seem very simple by today's standard, it was way ahead of its time for the 1700s. Other important figures include Ernst Schladini, and hopefully I said that right, from 1787, who illustrated the relationship between sounds and visual patterns. Also, Frederick Kastner in 1873 developed an instrument called the pyrophone that channeled jets of gas into crystal tubes that emitted both sounds and colored lights. Sounds safe, doesn't it? Many others like Alexander Wallace Remington and Bainbridge Bishop came out with their own versions of colored organs that seemed to become quite the trend of the 18th century and 19th century. Jump forward to the 20th century. And we definitely start to see visual music take off. In the early 1920s, Vladimir Baranov Rosin invented the piano octophonique. This instrument played a disc of colored glass through which light passed through the modulated prisms, lenses, and mirrors. This projected constantly changing colors that was accompanied by music. Also in the 1920s, Leon Theremin, probably recognize that name, known for the Theremin music instrument, made a device called the etherophone. And the etherophone produced colored effects by electrically stimulating liquids. In 1942, Cecil Stokes patented the Aurora Tone, based on polarized light and the effects of light passing through crystals. The crystals would vibrate with sound, causing a direct relationship between the music and the images. 
Other notable names to mention around this time period are Fritz Winkle, Alexander Laszlo, Mary Halleck Grinwalt, Charles Duggan, Gordon Posk, and many, many more. One of the most significant and well-known names of visual music is undoubtedly Oscar Fischinger. In the 1920s, he used a wax cutting machine he invented to create original animations. He would give performances projecting abstract films through the projectors and slide projectors onto three adjacent screens. In the 1930s, his abstract art was banned from Nazi Germany, forcing him to move over to the United States. After moving to America, he started working for companies like Paramount Pictures, MGM, and even Disney on Fantasia. In 1949, he created Stereoscopy, aka Stereo Film. Fischinger would sometimes synchronize the images with phonographs. I have just barely scratched the surface of Fischinger and could go on talking about him for another 60 minutes or so. However, I will instead invite you to learn more about him by visiting the Center for Visual Music website in the description below. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and remember, visual music is music for your eyes.